When Charles Noe presented Come Dancing, his life was a whirl of glitz and glamour. It was the high point of the broadcasting career of a man who had once been one of the youngest ever announcers on national radio. 18 months ago, he married Jess, but she's struggling to cope with a house filled with Charles's TV and radio memories. Now, sparks are beginning to fly. Charles, you're not addressing the problem. You are now, oh, because you're forced to. I'm addressing the problem. I'm getting rid of the... You're I'm being forced to. I'm Donna Walter. I help people declutter their homes. And Jamie Breeze is an antiques and collectibles expert. Together, we tackle people's messy lives to give them a fresh start. We'll make them decide what to keep, what to sell, and what to throw away forever. If you're not careful, I'll tell you where to insert it. Charles and Jess Nove now run a small recording studio and live in this semi-detached home in West London. On the inside, it's a dysfunctional disaster zone. Welcome to our living area. What a nightmare! <laughs> it's our living area. Hmm. You're sound engineers. Do you work from home? No. Could have fooled me. Well, the stuff tends to, the surplus stuff tends to gravitate here from uh, the, the town premises. Yes. Is it a source of conflict between the two of you? The messes, yeah. Yeah. I hate living with Charles. I hate living with Charles because um, it's all such a mess and uh, he never puts anything away and he never tidies up and he expects me to cope with it. Mm. Yes. And I can't. Mm. Yes, it goes. And well, how does it make you feel? Well, contrary <laughs> to popular opinion, I don't actually like the mess. It's... This can't be any fun. You have absolutely no place to relax in mm. your own home. And not only do you work together, which is tricky enough for a, a husband and wife, but then you come home and you're surrounded by all your work stuff. So you really never have a chance to be a couple and to relax. And that is not good. No, we've got to fix that. Yeah. Because I love him dearly. I know that. This is an absolutely fabulous piece. When we got it, it had uh, signs on all the drawers with different categories of gentlemen's outfits oh. and handkerchiefs and ties and braces. This that makes sense. It's from a clothing store, right? Yeah. yeah. It is so overwhelming mm -hmm. in here. And this is just a license for you to save things. Yes. It wasn't ever really intended to come in here. This was intended to go to our business premises at the time we were looking for business premises and they were quite large, so we thought this would be ideal. We did, we did, we did. It's but a rescue then, item. Yeah, then we ended up with much smaller premises up a narrow staircase. This was a non-starter for well, there. Door, so we, had to so come we here. thought, oh, it'll come here. Mm -hmm. Now, another one of my favourite things, Charles, mm -hmm. that I really need to get to the bottom of, please. <laughs> Can you just please tell me what these are doing in the living room? They're very endearing. There's a, a fascination about sheep. They're very simple creatures. One mission in life, which is to eat that grass over there, no matter you know what it takes to get there. And I'm just very fond of them. I find these two sheep, in particular, are, uh, are great friends of mine. You should be in here cuddling your wife, not your sheep. <laughs> Excuse me, Charles. Yeah. You're a gambling man, by any chance? The, uh, the fruit machine, yes. Sit down here. That has been with me for a long time. I got that as a present when I was a small boy, actually, because I've always been fascinated with bits of odd mechanics. I was not a tidy child. My room was my little empire, where I would have my bizarre electrical experiments going on. Really, nobody interfered with it very much. You know, I could just have my own little area where things were as I left them. This should be in a shed, Charles. Do you want a shed? I've got a shed. He's rather have... full of stuff, yes. but we might find a space. Are you going to show me? Come on. Let's go. Good luck, you'll need it. It's, Thank gru you. it's gruesome. Bye, okay, Charlie. We won't see him again. Nice. Thank you, Shane. You won't find another fool like me, babe. I'm really surprised. Oh, my word. Is this a shed? A garage? What well, extension of your personality? A garage in theory, but uh, it's drifted a bit from the plan. Wow, what a complete pit. Yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of horrible, really. This looks like some technical wooden earth, is it? 
Well, it, it, I kept it for spares, you see. It's, um, I mean, it's actually, it's a, a routing panel from a news um, audio collection area at the BBC from years ago, and it was being thrown out because it had been replaced by a computer. And uh, it was full of useful switches and lights and things, so I thought, I'll have that, and I'll reuse the switches. And in fact, this row of blank holes here tells you that I've reused lots of switches like that. So, amongst all this junk uh -huh. in this room is a piano. A piano, it's my piano. Play me something. Oh, I uh, just come on, play me something. Let me hear if it works. Uh, well, well, it does. It's actually quite, quite well in tune, actually. Without a pedal, because I can't find it. Oh, no. That sort of thing. When's the last time you played it? Uh, probably when I was 18, and I'm now 41. And it's just sitting here. Look at this. It's ghastly, isn't it? Isn't it just grim? Grim, grim, it grim. It is sad. I, I can't get to it, and I haven't got the time. Do you want to play it? No, Did you do it because your parents wanted you to yes, play Yes, they had aspirations for me to go to music college. <laughs> it wasn't fun, so I was made to play it because I was being listened to outside the room. Who was listening? My mum. And here it is, one of the few things in this room that I can see that might be yours. It, oh, yeah. Yeah. Hello, hello, hello. see a few of these lying around. Are these presenters cartridges? Yes. Oh, gosh, yes. Old bits of broadcasting technology. Are these uh, from your early days in broadcasting? Yes, yes. These are various, uh, various vintages. When I joined BBC Scotland in 1978, I was 18. And I was, at the time, I understand the youngest announcer they'd ever booked. When I moved to Radio 2 in London, that was April 1981, so I was not yet 21. I'm not sure if I was the youngest they'd ever booked, but I was certainly, you know, unusually young to be doing that job. I think there's probably a residual sadness that bits of the broadcasting that I've done, I did during their peak years, and they have gone. But oh, I haven't anywhere near peaked yet, I hope. Ah, the master bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> Not much wrong in here. <laughs> Bit mad about plaid, are you? Uh, I, I like colourful shirts. How many shirts do you need, Charles? Well, I need quite a lot, because I, I need to ring the changes. Variety. So you just go... And you just put it on like this and wear it? Why not? It's not ironed. It's well, a bit what? crumpled. It was ironed. Not only do you use the surfaces, yeah? Yeah. But you go creative and you use the railings. Well, the rail's a convenient place to hang things. This is shocking. Absolutely shocking. This, this makes me feel ill and angry as well. I'm angry all the time because of all the house. This is a bedroom for adults. And do you know what adults are supposed to do in bedroom? Tell us, Donna. You're supposed to be able to relax and yeah. enjoy and be intimate. Yeah. And this is not an intimate space. It's time to clear Charles and Jess's living room, bedroom and shed. It's confusion. He doesn't quite understand his role. He's a husband, yet because they work together, they're like workmates, mm -hmm. and so he doesn't realize when he comes in the house, he needs to be something different. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. They obviously work really, really hard, long hours. They deserve to come home to a house which is clean, tidy, and homely. We're taking Charles and Jess's belongings to a nearby sports club where we're going to help them decide what to keep and what to get rid of. Are you nothing yet, nothing, nothing, nothing yet. Can't see anything yet. <gasps> this is your home. <laughs> My God! <coughs> In a word? Match. <laughs> Petrol. I thought there might be one or two things to get rid of here. Uh, I've, I've been proved right, obviously. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I've seen that empty. Oh, it's around right here as well. Oh, yes. There's a lot of stuff to tackle, and most of it belongs to Charles. He needs to start by thinning out his huge collection of shirts. Now, look at the neck on that. Excuse me. Which? Oh, that blue one right there. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. Look at this. Look at this. Yeah. It's a battered old favourite. I suppose it'll have to go, then. Oh, get out of it. 
Do you listen to your music? Yes, I do. I haven't for quite a few years. Do you listen to your music? Yes, I do. I haven't for quite a few years now because our stereo has been hidden under the clutter and it has been a great source of uh, anger and disappointment and more anger that I, I can't listen to my music. I love listening to music under, under headphones as a, an escape. You're going to keep all of these? I'll keep all the CDs. They have been weeded and I've kept them. And I have to say, they are perfectly organised and you get the gold star Hooray! for CD organisation. Thank you very much indeed. You just never know what you're going to find, Charles. It can go. That is, uh, that, that is vintage Come Dancing 1996, I think. And for the first time, we feature an extra contest with an extra country as the modern and Latin competitors vie for the individual trophies. Come Dancing was just... A it was a bundle of laughs to do. An awful lot of people on the team knew each other and had worked together often, so it was a very nice atmosphere. I mean, it achieved 50 years before hostile forces killed it off. Can you just clunk it down here on the lawn? No, but that's excellent. Wow. What a grand old piece, and it is an old piece as well. Yeah, it's um, been with me a few years. It's made by Mills, the most classic of all the great American amusement machine makers, 1953 or 1954. Not in the, uh, the very best condition. It's best a bit of a, a battered old <laughs> stager, isn't it? Glasgow had all sorts of junk or one step up from junk shops at the time, and uh, I saw this in a local one, and I nagged my parents, senseless, until they, uh, they eventually agreed, and it, it appeared as a birthday present. The market for fruit machines has taken a bit of a tumble over the last five, six years, and uh, I don't know what you want to do with it, but um, it's a, it's a sellable piece, but it needs a lot of cosmetic work. I'm quite prepared for it to go. It's, I think it's had its day with me, and if it can make somebody else happy. I don't think he liked being a child, and he wanted to be with the grown-ups, and he wanted to make things and impress people. Um, so he wasn't much of a going out to play football child. He was a sitting in, making something really, really clever child. We're going to have a little chat. Uh oh. <laughs> There's something slightly ominous about that. No, I'm really very gentle and kind. Oh, great. You've dropped my sheep. Until it comes to grown men with stuffed animals. And then I turn vicious. Do you cuddle them? Not in a sort of unprompted way, no. I mean, I'm particularly fond of this, this large show on the sheep because he's, he's on a rigid frame, so you can actually you can use him as a footstool. You're a grown man, and you can't have stuffed animals. You can't. The person who separates me from this Sean sheep here will not leave this field alive. Are those fighting words? Yes. Why? I'm so fond of him. I'm putting Sean in the key pile. Lovely. Can the little ones go? They can definitely go. Now, I'm not going to let you keep three. But, 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 no, no. But. No, well, choose. Choose. Get out of it. Oh, do I see a little tear? No. Couldn't be. Not in my steely eye. No. All right. I think he may have to leave home because I cannot be parted with this sheep, and I don't think I can be parted with that sheep. OK. Charles likes to... I'm in control. And I'm pretty emotionless. He is actually the most emotional man I have ever met in my life. He cries at anything. Not sobbing, he has a little tear sometimes. It's the sheep thing and the shirt thing. He's very, very angry, he's very bruised. Ooh! Mm. Little treasures! Little treasures. What are they? Oh, uh, these are audio cartridges. One of, the, one of the bits of broadcasting technology that's been completely overtaken by the computer now. There's a side of you that is so interested in the technological aspects, which is mm. what you do now. And then there's the broadcasting side of you. And they're kind of two separate things. At my root, I'm a presenter. And is that what you'd really like to do now? Going on, uh, being, being, on being on air, communicating, is what, I, is what I grew up doing. It's what I knew I wanted to do from when I was a, a small boy. My father was certainly a renowned expert on the um, economic structure of the Soviet Union and uh, was interviewed quite regularly for radio and television and uh, 
as a lad interested in these things, I quite often used to go into the studios with him and watch what went on. Professor Nove, what did you think of both these books? Well, first of all, as far as Ian Gray's book is concerned, I was indeed also worried uh, that it was basically a pro-Stalin book. Uh, so uh, I'd be watching people twiddling knobs and wait. gradually amassing the information about how it worked. One, you're going to keep on. Come on, this is your opportunity to let go of bad habits. Done deal? All right. Jess, have you got a moment, please? Yes, Jamie. Yes. Ah, oh, the piano. Yes. I understand you've been having a chat with our daughter about the old Joanna. OK. And I found a buyer for you. <laughs> have you? Have you really? Yes. Good Lord. How do you feel about... Can't buy a piano. Uh, well, I'm feeling a bit tearful, actually, but it's, um, it needs to be used. Mm -hmm. And I can't use it anymore. Mm. Good memories or bad memories? Both. <laughs> <laughs> but there we go. Hmm. <laughs> Can I just have one last chord from you? How about that? <laughs> one last chord. I'll do C. Just one chord. A C major. Here we go. There we go. And for the last time? That's okay. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you, boys. The piano is going to a local dealer for £500, and the living room where it stood is being transformed along with Charles and Jess's bedroom and shed. Now Charles is about to find out if he can hit the jackpot with his fruit machine. Symbol, Jeff. <laughs> I'd like you to meet Charles, though. No. Hello, Charles. Nice <laughs> to meet Good you. Good to meet you. Nice to see you. This is your, uh, your friend who you're sadly saying goodbye to, I gather. Yeah, the time has come. We've been together a long, old time. Well, I tend to keep old machines because they're getting harder to get, and uh, as you can see, I'm quite into them. Could we say 250 for a quick sale? 225. Did you do 225? Charles? Uh, and three lemons. <laughs> We're taking the pith. <laughs> <laughs> Jess has finished sorting out her belongings, but there's still a huge pile of stuff that has been rotting in the shed for years. There are boxes and boxes full of reminders of the happiest times in Charles's television career. He lives in the past, I think. He loves the 70s, the late 70s and early 80s, and that's when he started his career, and he loved all the engineering things that went along with that time. And all the VHSs, all the times he was on the television, he's, he's got them all. What's on these tapes? There's collections of programmes that I've worked on or programmes that were transmitted in years that I'm particularly interested in. You need to learn to edit everything, OK? You don't need to be the nation's archivist. I'm not trying to be. I'm trying to be my archivist. You have a problem with clutter in your house because you keep everything. So what are you keeping these for? The British for? Library is full of stuff that people don't look at every day. Donate them. It's not clutter. No, they won't want that, but I want that because it's got stuff that I'm interested in. And how often do you look at it? I may look at it once in a very blue moon, but I'd be very sorry not to have it. Would you be sorry not to have your wife? I think she'll cope with those being present. We live far more now in an era of specialism and an era of celebrity and the sort of idea of a, broad, a professional broadcasting all-rounder has been squeezed out. That I regret, because that's what I grew up wanting to be in broadcasting. I don't feel like I can do it. I but Charles is still that. stalling, and Jess has had enough. Charles, you're not addressing the problem. You are now, well, because you're forced to. I'm not addressing the problem. I'm getting rid of the... You're I'm being forced to. But what happens when it's just you and me? You'll start I'm, uh, I'm doing it again. Delighted to get rid of, uh, to get rid of, you know, yeah, stuff that's genuine rubbish. Let's get rid of it. Charles. Charles is quite a dominant figure, not in any nasty way. He's a, he's a, he's a, as I say, he's a lovely man. Um, but he wouldn't listen. He, sometimes he just doesn't listen to anybody, and he does what he wants to do. And um, nothing in the house seemed to be mine, and I've, I've never found any corner my own at all if you don't use it and you don't appreciate it and look at the way it's being stored you clearly don't appreciate it in this game well maybe there's no room for history in your life but there's room for history in my life look at the way that you preserve history yeah and i want to preserve shoe, it better that shoe just makes it stick to my stomach i mean that whole gathering of that 
That is so, disgusting and vile yeah. and mouldy and... Those should ugh. never have been hung on to and they go. They depart, they leave. A little pressure, please. And what about this cable? Do what you like with it. Thank you. Not careful, I'll tell you where to insert it. Go ahead. Tell me. Tell me how angry you... Tell me how angry you are about this. Tell me. I've outlined, I've outlined how, I, how I feel. I, 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 find, I find willful wastefulness really offensive. So in my time, I've rescued a lot of stuff off skips. You're not rescuing it. You're just hiding it away. Out of sight, out of mind. That's been the result of keeping too much of it. But Charles's plans to preserve his television memories are in big trouble. Oh, my Lord, these have come from the shed. Ooh. And there's... Oh, my Lord, look. Ah, yeah. Oh, dear. <laughs> it's the well-known underwater method of video preservation. <laughs> that's, uh, that's kind of awful. The sea level is high. Yeah. And uh, all these videotapes, they're going to be shot, and there's some radio carts here as well. Yeah, they're not going anywhere in a hurry, are they, really? Aren't these all cherished memories? No, you know, they, if, they were, if they were that cherished, they'd, they'd have been around in the house. They'll be, they'll be old, excess uh, video cassettes. Oh, that's what happens just, when you leave stuff like this in the shed. Oh. What is going on here? Look at this, Donna. Oh, Things dear. go to the shed to drown. They do seem to, don't they? Oh. <laughs> what? I don't know. A lot of that. Uh, well, well, it was. It, it was. It must have been binnable. Otherwise, I'd have got rid of it. Your case here is just going downhill very rapidly. I have to tell you. Caught like a rat in a trap. Yes. My ambitions in broadcasting are just to continue doing it and to do a range uh, of it. I'm very cautious that I, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't be talking about my broadcasting career in any sort of past tense, because I'm still young. I still have so much to offer. But the show ain't over yet. Charles. What's that, that was in the hall for six months, oh, just yes, in case there's that. some fantastic buttons. Yeah, that's that thing I want to strip the buttons off, isn't it? But you know, it's going. you know what? What? You know what? I've been forced to feet, forced to face the fact that I probably can't do everything. Isn't that it? I can't do everything. Yeah. At considerable personal upset, I suppose I can let it go. Okay, this is all going. Yep, going. This one too, and Claire, I'm really proud of you. Oh, thank you. Too. Go on, give me a hug. You have to give me a hug. <laughs> okay. I know it's all right now. We've got good weather. And yes. another bit of good news, we've got one of the best spots because. Oh, excellent. There's the only food van. <laughs> 40 minutes. Grand. Any sheep? No. See, these are two quid each, mister. <laughs> yes, I can. Yes. <laughs> Top bargain of the day, two Sean the Sheep from the Wallace and Gromit films. I must sell these, and the price is one pound each. These are future collectibles. Say goodbye, Charles. <laughs> Cheers, mister. By the end of the day, the car boot sale has made Charles and Jess more than 750 pounds. Well done, guys. You've done a grand job. We're nearly over today. <laughs> Okay. What, what do you think? Ten quid the pair? <laughs> <laughs> After all their hard work, Charles and Jess have 16 bags for recycling, 24 boxes for charity, and 23 bags of rubbish. But now it's time for Charles to face the crusher. Jamie, turn on the crusher and let's let them go. There she goes. Jamie, pass over those objects. Yep. Farewell, old technology. <laughs> oh dear, that sounds unpleasant. You're now a grown man with one fewer sheep to your name. How does it feel? Fantastic. You would say oh, that, wouldn't you? Oh, a quivering lip. 
Brutal. It was the Brutal? sheep. Brutal? It's yeah. the sheep. It's the sheep. It's the, it's the old sheep. It's the old sheep problem, you know. It is. <laughs> it's the sheep because doctor. <laughs> was in here. <laughs> Do you know that table, those yeah. chairs, were in this room hidden away? Oh, yes. Yes, that is the original table, yes, isn't it? Yes, it? It, is, it, yeah. it is. I've been wanting <laughs> yeah. to use it for a long time. You can entertain. It's an enormous room. Absolutely enormous. Mm. And light and bright and airy. The big overpowering cabinet has gone. And it, that's another thing that makes the room feel so big. It was always our intention to have a, a good big room here, but, uh, you know, it, it didn't quite work out as we'd hoped. It was. <gasps> the cabinet. Good grief, so it is. <laughs> Your cabinet is absolutely the perfect place to keep your bits and bobs. Your cables and different bits of equipment, and you can organize them to death. Yep. So it's the only <laughs> shed in Great Britain with a glitter ball in it, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to remind you of come dancing, no doubt. Same room at all, is it? <laughs> all right, Charles. Because you were so good and you weeded out all of your shirts, they now have a home in their very own wardrobe. So every single night, you need to hang them up or put them in the laundry bin, but no more putting them on surfaces. And up here, we have your sheep. My sheep are the survivors of the flock. And is this reminiscent of your wedding? Yes, I remember that day very well, yes. Beautiful day on the, uh, the seafront at Brighton. The morning after? Morning after the wedding. Now that we have no shirt art on the walls, you can <laughs> actually have some lovely memories to look at. Yeah. I'm not really one for shirt art. No, no, no. It, was a, it was an experimental style. It didn't catch on. <laughs> I'm looking forward to exploring life with the shed. I think I may retreat out there quite a lot. Uh, I love the idea of having a, a, a proper workshop space. I have my own space, which I haven't entirely explored yet, because I'm looking forward to delving into the other rooms. <laughs> Head first, with Charles not far behind. <laughs> Please note, we don't all live like that. Well, except for the announcers on BBC One. 